Hello, I'm Hal Holbrook. Welcome to Theater in America. Tonight we present All Over, a powerful poetic drama by one of America's best known playwrights, Edward Albee. Despite the fact that Albee has won two Pulitzer Prizes, he remains a controversial artist. When All Over opened on Broadway in 1971, it received a mixed reception and ran for only a few performances. It's a credit to the vitality of the resident theater movement in this country that the Hartford Stage Company of Connecticut, under the direction of Paul Widener, has given us this new production of Albee's play, thereby making the distinction between quality and popularity. In All Over, the author of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and a Delicate Balance continues his exploration of family relationships. It's a beautifully orchestrated play, full of reminiscence and dreams, in which the characters interact within a defined social ritual. They're cultured people, obligated to behave in a civilized manner, but frustrated by the roles society has forced them to play. Is he dead? Oh, Mother, I wish you wouldn't say that. Is he dead? I'm sorry. It's not your curiosity, I mind. It's a wifely right, and I know it's not impatience. It's the form. We talked about it once, I remember, he and I did. Though not how it came up, I don't remember that. But let me see. He put down his fork one lunch at my house. What had we been talking about? Major Lincoln, that plagiarism business, I seem to recall. And we had done with that. And we were examining our salads when all at once he said, I wish people wouldn't say other people are dead. I asked him why, as much as anything to know what had turned him to it. And he said that the verb to be was not to his mind appropriate to a state of non-being. <laughs> that one cannot be dead. He said his objection was a quirk and the grammarians would scoff, but that one could be dying or have died but could not be dead. Majorly? Well, that was just one day. I'm sorry for having taken issue. No matter. Let me rephrase it then. Has he died? Not yet. Will he die soon? Please, Mother. I would like to know. Merely that. Relatively. To? To the time it's taken him so far. Then what was the urgency? Hunch. Don't you want to be here? I don't know. It's not required that you do know. It is more or less required that you be, I think, here. Family. Isn't it one of our customs that if a man has not outlived his wife and children, will not outlive them, they gather? And his closest friend as well. And don't forget her. And his very special friend, too. Thank you. And we do it. Custom, want or do not. We wait until we cannot be asked unless there is something written or said refusing it, and we gather, often even if we are refused. And is that so, in your lawyerish way? No, we have not been refused. A hunch. Nothing more technical than that, more medical. Your hunch, it will be soon. Your intuition, if you were a woman. 
Our doctor's graced with that. We've not come any distance. Is it just we're in the room with him, not at the hotel or downstairs? I suppose so. And that we lived here once. That was another century. Hutch, I cannot give it to you to the minute. Did I predict when she would be born? The hour, the day, for that matter, or him? There you have reason. Yes. And what is it? You should let him die in the hospital. Yes. Hooked up. Whatever. Oh, yes, of course we should have. Can you imagine it? Choose, wires, all those machines leading to and from a central gadget. That's what he'd become with all those tubes and wires. One more machine. Back me up. Oh, far more than that. A city seen from the air, the rail lines and the roads. Or an octopus, the body of the beast. The tentacles, electrical controls, recorders, modulators, breath and heart and brain waves and the tubes in either arm and in the nostrils where had he gone in all that equipment i thought for a moment he was keeping it functioning the tubes and wires they help to keep time to answer your questions easier that's all the questions are very simple now a stopwatch would do it a finger on the wrist we are led to understand he said here we have your word for it. We have her word for everything. He said, here, when it becomes hopeless, no. Is that what he said? Or when it becomes pointless, he said, me brought back here. I want a wood fire and a ceiling I have memorized. And the knowledge of what I could talk about in were I to. I want to leave from someplace I have known. My word for it, yes, you've only my word for so very much. If he loved you, for example, anymore. You all have my word, and that's all. I translate for you. I tell you what I remember, or what I think I remember, and I lie sometimes. And I tell you what he would have said had he thought to, or bothered. That will not do. Please. Please. When I came there to the hospital the last time, before the removal here, I said, you were not there. We're shopping or resting, I think. Looking at him, all wired up. I stood at the foot of the bed. Small talk all gone years ago. I shook my head and I clucked, I'm afraid. For he opened his eyes a little, baleful. As I suppose my gaze must have seemed to him. So it was me objected this won't do at all i said wouldn't you rather be somewhere else do you want to be here he kept his eyes half open a moment or so then closed them and nodded his head very slowly well which i said for i realized i'd asked him two questions and a nod could mean either yes or no which is it i said do you want to be here slow shake of the head you would rather be somewhere else? Eyes opened and closed twice in what I know from eons to be impatient, <laughs> then nodding. <laughs> well, naturally, I said in my bright business tone, of course, you don't want to be here. Do you want to go home? No reply at all, the eyes burning at me. Your own home, I mean, not mine, certainly, or hers. Perhaps you want to go there. Shall I arrange something? Still the eyes, still no movement. Do you want her to arrange it? Eyes still on me, no movement. Has it been arranged? Has she arranged it already? The eyes lightened. I could swear there was a smile in them. She has. Well, good. If it is done, splendid. All I care is whether it is done. I no longer feel possessive, <laughs> have not for. And the eyes went out, stayed open, went out, as they had oh so often, so far back. That is one of those things. Mother. Do not deflect me. Mother. Yes. Out. Stayed open, went out. Ah, well, that happened often. Yes. Ah, well, yes. 
Odd I don't remember it. The opening and closing, of course. The impatience. But out? Ah, oh, well, perhaps you should have noticed it must have happened. <laughs> yes, perhaps I should have. Doubtless it did. Well, always for me, yes. Was. The past tense? Why not is? He has not for some time. You were a little girl, are you still? Semantics from a C minus. Leave her alone. Was it not at school a C minus? If that, you were a little better. It was always for me an indication. Yes. That Something? Oh, no, just business. An indication that some small fraction had gone out of him, some faint shift from total engagement, or if not that, a warning of it. Intended. Ah, uh, then I do know it, or the sense of it, uh, and probably from what you describe without knowing I was aware of it. I've been aware of it. In him? Oh, no, in myself. You have? Yes, I have. How extraordinary. When? Well, in relation to my wife, when I was wavering on the divorce, uh, during that time that you and I were, how do they put it, comforting one another, that secret time I fear that everyone knew of. He never knew of it. I did. I didn't tell him. But there wasn't very much to tell. <laughs> no, but some. Briefly. It was after I had decided not to get the divorce that year after, until I committed her. Each thing, each incident, uprooting all the roses, her hand so torn so, killing the doves and finches, setting fire to her hair, all, all those times, those things I knew were pathetic and not wanton. I, I watched myself withdraw, step back, Shut down some portion. That's not the same. No, not at all. She was insane, your wife. And that's not what we mean at all. No, not at all. It is what you were talking about. No, it's when it happens calmly and in full command. The tiniest betrayal. Nothing so calamitous as a lie held on to in the face of fact. Also niggling as a fantasy during an act of love. But in between. And it can be anything or nearly nothing. Except... It moves you back into yourself a little. This knowledge all your sharing's been arbitrary, willful, and that nothing's been inevitable or even necessary when the eyes close down, go out. My father is dying. Yes, he is. You want to go back downstairs, any of you? The photographers, the people from the newspapers. I put my foot on the staircase and they're all around me. Has it happened yet? Is he? May we go up now? Eager. Soft voices, but very eager. Well, they have their families, their wives, their mistresses. No, thank you. I'll stay up here. I'll sit it out. Neat. Did you say neat? Yes, she did. Because I said sit it out? Hmm. Well, what are you doing? I'm waiting out a marriage of 50 years. I'm waiting for my husband to die. I'm thinking of the little girl I was when he came to me. I'm thinking of, do you want me to stop? Almost everything I can except the two of you. You and your unprepossessing brother. Do forgive me. I am sitting it out. I am sitting it out. And you are? Enjoying it less than you. You're not a very kind woman. She's been raised at her mother's knee. <laughs> and am I suddenly your daughter? Oh, my stars, no. Well, you have assumed so much. The little girl I was when he came to me. So much? Interesting, it's only the mother who ever really knows whose child it is. <laughs> well, the husband knows the wife is having the baby. <laughs> he took me aside one day. 
before you and he had made your liaison. They were grown, though. <laughs> and rather in the guilty way of did I really back the car through the whole tulip bed, <laughs> asked me, his eyes self-consciously focusing just off somewhere. <laughs> did I make these children? Was it our doing, the two of us alone? <laughs> I laughed with some joy. <laughs> For while we were winding down, we were doing it with talk and presence. The silences and the goings off were later. The Titans were still engaged. <laughs> and I said, oh, yes, my darling, yes, we did. They are our very own. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. And what do you think now? Are you back at my intuition? My hunch, your funny names for all the years I've watched you come and go, both your parents, both of his, my 60 years of practice, the 40 years she's come here with me to sit up nights with you all. Yes, 60 years of something. Even on the chance of frightening the horses are being taken as heartless, which I am not. Are you holding him back, or are you seeing him through to it? I've stopped the intravenous feeding. You're letting him starve, if you will. He's breathing very slowly, like sleep. His heart is well, weak, bored as close to it. He's bleeding internally. Shall I go on? Please do. If you'd like to come and look. He seems to have diminished every time I turn my head away and come back. There'll be precious little left for the worms. The flames. Oh. Yes? He will be burned. And you're not to snatch my heart from the flames, he said. For it is not a tasty organ. Perhaps. Perhaps he will be burned. Surely he didn't suggest an outdoor event, a funeral pyre. <laughs> Don't you have something? Some papers? No, you must. You must. There are papers, yes. Envelopes I have not opened on instruction. There may be. It was a verbal envelope. I will go by what is down. Of course he will. Oh, Christ, you people. You will go by what I tell you, finally. As I've told you. No. We will go with what is. With what resides. Well, goodness. If a man desires to go up in flames, let him put it down on a tablet. Or shall we go over and shake him? Wake him to the final glory before the final glory and have two women at him with a best friend overhead and make him make his mind up. My darling, we merely want to know. Is it flame or worm? Your mistress tells me you prefer the flame, while I, your merely wife of 50 years, the mother of your doubting children, true or true, my darling, wants you to the worms. Do tell her. Yes. Open your awful lips for a moment. Or do your eyes. Open and close them. Put them on and out. Let us finally misunderstand. Death is such an old disease. That being so, it must be a comfort having someone as old as I am by the bed. 
familiar with it, knowing it so well? Well, let me discomfort you. I was not pleased to have you get a younger man. I said to him, be kind. There are customs. And you had them, the surgeons, the consultants, younger. Well, not brash, but I doubt you'd have wanted that. Some bouncy intern with a scalpel in one hand, a racket under his arm. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I'm rather like a priest. You have me for the limits, birth and dying, and for the minor cuts and scratches in between. If that nagging cough keeps nagging, now it's not me opens up the throat or chest, not me. I send you on to other men very quickly. I'm the most general of practitioners. I'm sorry. Of course, if you think some younger man would do better here, have him on his feet and at the fireplace, clinking the ice in a bourbon. No, water. I said I'm sorry, just railing against it. I am sorry. The custom of the house, and it has been for so long, like that with what you start out with. Oh, God. The little girl I was when he came to me. The house, the custom of which house? Of wherever he is. The house he carries on his back, or in his head. Oh, well, I thought I knew it all, having been so... having participated so fully. Is it written on one of your lovely things, your pieces of paper, that we end up with what we start out with, or that he does? No. I thought not. For Dr. Day, who brought him into this world, into all this, went down with that boat. Ship, rather. The iceberg one. Or was it the German sub? The iceberg, I think. Titanic. Thank you. Day did not go down with the ship. He, he did, did not. not. May I? Day went down with what we all go down with. And one day, if you'll forgive the pun, he felt the burning far too up in his chest and the sense of the kidneys saying they cannot go on and the sudden knowledge that it is all gone on. From what central, possibly stoppable place. Like eating that last unwanted shard, that salad, breathing the air from the top of where. The one thing we are born to discover and never find. And he focused in on his killer and he looked on it and said, I will not have you. So he booked on the Titanic, of course. Well, that is what I thought. Of course. Well, something rather. I mean, if the cancer's on you and you're a doctor to boot and you know the chances and the pain, what do you do, save book, on a boat you think's going to hit an iceberg and sink? Oh, then he did not go down on the Titanic. No, he went to Maine. To his lodge and fished for about a week. Then he killed himself. And the story of the ship? It was a fiction, invented by his wife and agreed to by his mistress. By the happy coincidence that the Titanic did go down when he did. Oh, nobody believed it, you understand. The obituaries were candid. But it became a euphemism and was eventually accepted. Poor woman. Poor women. Who was his mistress? I didn't know he had one. I was. Gracious. You're old, aren't you? <laughs> yes, very. <laughs> it never occurred to me before. You've always been such a presence. Oh, I don't believe a single word you've told us. I don't care. You see, you are a sailor. Does he? You see, I did my tithe all at once in the prisons when I was young. After my internship, I went ahead. We never knew that. No? No. <laughs> it was a while ago. It was before our minds had moved to the New Testament or our reading of it. Men would die then for their killing soon if, well, perhaps not decently, but what passed for decently if burning a man alive survived the test. We were all Old Testament Jews. We still are, 200 million of us save the children, for we believe what we no longer practice. If, if the justice was merciful, for that's what sets us medicine men apart from jurors, we're not in a hurry. But I was with them stayed with them, helped them have what they wanted for the last time. And I would be with them, and they were alone in the death cells, no access to each other, and 
The buggery was over, had it ever begun, the buggery and the rest. And there were some in the final weeks who had abandoned sex, uh, masturbation, to God or fear or some enveloping withdrawal, but, but not all. Some, some made love to themselves in a frenzy. Indeed, I treated more than one as bleeding from it from so much. And several confided to me that their masturbation image was their executioner, some fancy of how he looked. The little girl I was when he came to me. You see? You see? No one cares. I am 86, which I was informed by my grandson, or perhaps my great nephew, I confused them. Well, not the two, but the... Well, they look alike and have what I confess I think of as wigs, though I know they're not. Long, lovely, turning down and underneath at the shoulders, blonde and gray-like hair. But, but they said to me, or one of them did, 86? Man, that means going out. Of course, I knew what they meant, but I was coy with it. And I asked them why. What does that make me? 86. Now, does that make me? And suddenly I knew. I knew I wanted to lie in the long blonde hair. Put my lips there in the back of the neck of the blonde hair over me. I don't follow you. I, I was completing what I'd begun before, how we become enraptured by it, by the source of our closing down. You see, I suddenly loved my executioners. Well, figuratively. In the way of nestling up against them, huddling close. For we do seek warmth, affection even, from those who tell us we're going to die. Or when. I believe in the killing. Some of it for some of it. Of course. Give us a theory and we'll do it in. You can't believe in it. See? Your own wife. You can't do that. There was no killing me. Just divorce. It wasn't us that did her in. Our late summer arrangement. There had been others. Our mercy to each other by the lake, the city. That didn't take a wild woman who could still bake bread and give a party half the time and send her spinning back into the animal brain. No, my dear. Rutting, as I've heard it called, is not what got at her. Yours and mine, I mean. Our rutting. Divorce. Leave alone. So don't tell me you don't believe in murder. You do. I do. She does, and it makes it. I want to talk to him. You all said she was insane. Did I? Well, perhaps I meant she was going. Perhaps we all did. Then talk to him. You can preface every remark by saying for the first and last time, and you'll get no arguments as that. I'd not do it, though. You'd start to cry. There's little enough emotion in you. I'd save it. He's dying. I know. It was progressive. I asked him. The violence was transitional. I saw her not two months ago. Did you? I'd been to the club and was getting in my car. And someone pulled up alongside, and someone said uh, coolly, I think, well, I declare. It was a voice I knew, and I turned my head, and it was her sister behind the wheel with another woman in the death seat beside her, as it is called. I do declare, she said, definitely cool. And I perceived it in an instant before I looked that my wife was in the back, my ex-wife. 
and that the woman in the front was from the hospital. No uniform, but an attendant of some sort. Look who we have here. That's the way she talked. Smile, set eyes, madder than my wife's could ever be. A sane woman. The attendant was smoking. I remember that. Of course, I looked, and indeed, she was there in the back. At a corner, a fur rug, half backdrop, half cocoon. How small she was in it. <laughs> Look who's here, her sister said, this time addressing her. Her head turned to catch both our expressions. The windows were down, and I put my hands on the sill, if that's what car doors have. Hello, I said. How are you? Realizing, as I said it, that if she laughed in my face or screamed or went for me, I would not have been surprised. She smiled, though and stroked the fur beside her cheek with the back of her hand. Her voice was calm and extremely rested. It's fine in here, she said. How is it out there? Well, I didn't reply. I was so aware of her eyes and her sister's and the attendant not turned but looking straight ahead and smoking. And she went on. Oh, it would be so nice if I could say to you, come closer so I could whisper something to you. That way I could put my hand to the back of your head and say very softly, help me. Either that or I could rub my lips against your ear the way you like and then grab you with my teeth and hold on as you pulled away, blood dripping. so objective and without rancor I didn't move at all the attendant did I remember she turned but I can't do that though she said sadly I think do you know why no I, I don't know why well, because, he said, when I look at your ear, I see the rump and tail of a mouse coming out of it. He must be chewing very deeply. I didn't move. My fingers stayed where they were. It could be that I was trying to fashion some reply, but there is none to that. when her sister gunned the engine. And having, having seen me when she parked, she must have thought to keep it idling. Nice to see you, she said. Grim smile, mad eyes, and she backed out, curving, shifted, and moved off. Well, what I retained from their leaving most of all, above the mouse or my wife or myself, for that matter, was the sound of her sister's bracelet against the steering wheel. A massive gold chain with a disc suspended from it. A large, thin disc with her first name in facsimile scrawled across one face of it. That. Clanking as she shifted. Then I'm sorry. It's all right. It's not true, you know. There's more emotion in me than you think. Well, I hope so. You're very silent. 
Yes, I was wondering why I was. I had noticed it. It rather puzzled me. It's not my way. No. Outsider, I oh, guess. Star. No, well, yes, in this context. Listening to you with a capping on it. God, that was effective as you did it. And I dare say you needed it. Perhaps that's how we keep the 19th century going for ourselves. We pretend it exists and... Well, outside. What will you do? I don't know. I really don't. Give me a schedule. Who runs to the coverlet first and who throws her arms where and where and where does it matter? And who grabs the shoulders to shake the death out of them and who collapses at the knees? You don't know. Oh, God, the little girl that you were when you came to me. I don't know. Ultimately, an outsider. I was thinking about that, and I concluded it was the ritual that made it so. Well, this is ritual, is it not? Twenty years without it, except an awkwardness at Christmas, perhaps. I remember one December in particular, when it was in the papers you were suing for divorce. Glad you didn't, I think. It would have forced him to marry me or not, move off. <laughs> he missed you all then. Oh, he always has, mildly. But that Christmas, we were at the lodge. It was the next year that we took to the islands to avoid the season as much as anything. Though it was good for his back, the sun. That one in particular. We sat in front of the great fire with all the snow and the pines. And I know he missed, well, family. He missed the ritual, I think. Though I doubt if you were very good with Christmas, hardly prototypical. Wassail and chestnuts. Once. Chestnuts. You are right. <laughs> In front of the fire, Christmas Eve, we had been holding hands, but were not. Not at that minute. And maybe I, perhaps. But there was a great, all of a sudden, a slack. And I caught his profile as he gazed into the fire, that marvelous granite. And it was as if he had deflated just perceptibly. I took his hand, he turned to me, smiled, came back. You should spend it with them, I said, every year. He said he thought not, and it wasn't for my sake. Drone, drone. It is the ritual, you see, that gives me the sense. The first few times I wouldn't go to his doctorates until he made me do it in the banquets when he spoke. Naturally, I'd never considered myself a secret. But I'm not a tart, I wouldn't have been good at it. But the ritual reminds me of what I believe is called my status, to be something so fully, and yet, well, it's no matter. I wonder if I'd been you, the little girl that you were when you came to me. Would you have come along as I did? Would you have come along to take my place? They're all down there. The cameramen, the television people, the reporters. They gave me a container of coffee. Well, why aren't they being looked after? Didn't you tell them in the kitchen to see what the was needed? The ones outside. The crews with their trucks and lights. They gave me the coffee. <laughs> it's like a fungus. The TV people are on the stoop with all their equipment on the sidewalk. And you and your tubes and wires. Like a fungus. All those outside and the photographers have assumed the entrance hall like a stag line. Nobody sits. The newspaper men have taken the library. For that is where the scotch is. Go down and do something. Don't bother. It's all been set. Touch it and you'll have it on the landing. Leave it. Who is that man? <laughs> I suppose. I forgot to mention the police. The police? For the people. There aren't many now. The people. 25, maybe. The sort of crowd you'd get for a horse with a sunstroke if it was summer. TV's brought them out. The trucks and the tubes. They're lounging. And nothing better to do. And if it weren't night and a weekend, I doubt they'd linger. I mean, God, we don't have the president in here or anything. Don't talk like that. Shouldn't you go down? No, it's a public event. Will be. It's a final test of fame, isn't it? The degree of it? Which is more newsworthy, the act of dying itself or 
Merely the dead. Merely? Oh, I wasn't speaking for me or you, them, the public. Is it enough for them to read about it in the papers without feeling a kind of anger at having missed the dying too? But they were cheated with the Kennedys, both of them, and with King. It all happened so fast, all the people could figure for themselves was that they'd been clubbed in the face by history. Even poor Bobby. He took the longest, but everybody knew he was dead before he died. Oh, Christ, that loathsome doctor on the t kept telling us all. Once at all, as I see it. The bullet where it is, the hemorrhaging, no chance, no chance. Jesus, you couldn't even hope. It was a disgusting night. I wanted to be young and a man and violent and unreasoning. Rage so that it meant something. Pope John was the last one the public could share in. Two weeks of the vilest agony, conscious all the time, unsedated because it was something his God thought he should experience. I don't know, maybe a bullet is better in spite of everything. Perhaps. What a sad and shabby time we live in. Yeah. <laughs> you hypocrites. Oh? You pious hypocrites. What a sad and shabby time we live in. Yes. Oh, you dare sit there and shake your heads like that. To hell with you and your affair with him. Well, that's not bad for sad and shabby, is it? But what about her? What about her? Yes, what about me? Mistress is a pretty generous term for what it's all about, isn't it? So is kept. Isn't that another euphemism? How much do you think she's gotten from him? Half a million? A million? There are things you do not know, little girl. You live with a man who will not divorce his wife, who's become a drunkard because of him, who is doubtless supplied with her liquor gratis from his liquor store, a business which is, I take it, the height of his ambition, who has taken more money from you than I like to think about, who's broken one rib that I know of and blackened your eyes and dared dared to come to me and suggest I intercede with your father right. in a political matter which stank of the mafia. All right. You know a lot about sad and shabby. You know far too much to turn the praise on others, especially on those who do not make a point of doing what they will or must as badly as possible. That is probably what I have come to love you so little for, that you love yourself so little. Don't ever tell me to make a life for anyone who does things out of love or even affection. You were beautiful, you know. You really were. Once. My parents are both still alive, I suddenly remember. They are neither of them particularly limber. They keep to themselves more than not. My father's eyesight is such that when he dares to drive at all, it stands center lines of the road. Oh, it makes the other drivers cautious. She's learned the snapping at him does no good at all. And the once that she put her hand on the wheel thinking, she told me later that his drift to the left was becoming more pronounced. He resisted her. The result was horns and weaving in a ditch or a shoulder, whichever it is, and a good deal of heavy breathing. Why doesn't she drive? No, she could learn, but I imagine she'd rather sit there with him and see things his way. Why doesn't she walk or take a taxi or just not go? Oh, she loves him, you see. My grandfather died just last year. Oh, stop it. Please, stop telling me to stop it. He was 103, my mother's father, and not at all like those centenarians who are always reading about full head of snow white hair, out chopping wood when they're not burying their fourth wife or doing something worthy in the Amazon. No, not a bit of it. He was a wispy little man whom none of us liked very much, including my mother, who would be a saint one day were it not for Luther. <laughs> a tiny little man with the face of a starving child. 
and blonde hair of the type that white does not become, and very little of that, and bones that would appear of the finest porcelain, for he fell when he was 72, and he did to his pelvis what you would do to a teapot were you to drop it on a flagstone floor. The bones dry out. Indeed they must, for he took, or rather he was taken to his bed, and he remained in it for 31 years. <laughs> he wanted to be read to a lot. Poor oh, man. <laughs> Shh, now, as I say, he wanted to be read to a lot. This wasn't easy for his family and his fast diminishing set of friends, but he was hard of hearing and you had to shout. <laughs> plus, plus, everyone knew he had the eyesight of a turkey buzzard. <laughs> so finally, we had to start hiring people. <laughs> Stop it! A turkey buzzard! Stop it! Stop it's it. not true, is it? Stop it! No, Stop not a word of it! You filth! You, you filth all allowance! You! 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 Stop it! You bitches! Why don't you go home to your own filth? You! You! Issue! Your morality is incredible. Oh, it really is. You're a model for the world. You're smug and excluding. Oh, you're incredible, all of you. Well, since you've nothing else to do, why don't you run downstairs and tell the waiting press about our morality? And while you're at it, tell them about your own as well. This woman has come and taken my father. Yes. My husband, remember? And that makes all the difference. Perhaps your fancy man has people who care for him, who worry after him. They're not my concern. They may be yours, but I doubt it. I care about what happens here. This woman loves my husband as I do. She has made him happy as I have. She's good and decent. And she is not moved by envy and self-loathing. Like some people. Indeed, like some people. Like you. Like you. Like you. Somewhere in the rubble you've made of your life so far, you must have an instinct tells you why she's part of us. No? She loves us. And we love her. Do you love me? Does... Anyone love me? Well, do you love anyone? <sighs> Will she? Will she go down and tell the waiting press? I don't know. I don't think she would, but I don't know. I laughed before because it was so unlikely. I had an aunt, a moody lady, but with cause. She died when she was 26, died in the heart, that is, or whatever portion of the brain controls the spirit. She went on, all the appearances, was snuffed out finally at 62 in a car crash. All done up in jodhpurs and a derby. <laughs> Yellow scarf with the fox head stick pin. Driving in the vintage car. The old silver touring car. The convertible with the window between the front and back seats. Back from the stable. From jumping. <laughs> curve. Bash straight into the bread truck. Parker House rolls and blood. Her 26-year heart emptying out of her 62-year body on the fox head pin and the metal and the gasoline and all the cardboard boxes sprawled on the country road. Does anyone love me? She asked once, back when I was nine or ten. There were several of us in the room, but they were used to it. Do you love anyone? I asked her back. Slap! Then tears, hers and mine. Mine not from the pain, 
but the effrontery as both affrontery and pain. Mm. Yes. You tell them. Get back downstairs! You can't get out of here! Out! 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 You shouldn't have done that. You know you shouldn't. I know I shouldn't. Gentler. No matter how you feel. I know. I said I know. If they'd gotten in. <laughs> Not with our sentries. You'd need an army for that. No matter how you feel. I feel. Well, like you must have felt when you were young at school and you fail or be dismissed to make some point you didn't know quite what. Like that. I feel like a child, rebellious, misunderstood, and known. Oh, so very well. Sated and empty. I'm on to myself. There's no mistake there. I'm all the things you think of me, every one of you. I am also many more. Wonder why they didn't kill me, the two of them. There's enough death going here. Oh, I don't know. God knows I can probably go my own way now, without a word or a look from any of you. Non grata has its compensations. Go my own way. What a relief. Back to that degradation of mine. Imagine her degrading a family as famous as this, up by its own bootstraps. Well, the only one of it who mattered anyway. All the responsibility to itself, the Puritan moral soul. How does it go? Since we have become what we are, then the double edge is on us. We cannot back down, for we are no longer private. And the world has its eye on us. Oh, Christ. You'd think we were only nominally mortal. He, at any rate, and he's the only one who matters. He's mortal enough, going to prove to be. And the eye of the world. Eyes are attached to the brain, I believe. And the monster is sluggish nowadays, all confused and retreating, surly and withdrawn. Folk heroes, maybe. But not his type. Too much up here. If you can't take it all in at once, relate to it, dear God. Grant it its due, but don't dwell on it. The dustbin. Anachronism. Well, I'll be glad when he's gone. Oh, no. No, not for all the horrid reasons, not for all your mistakes about me, but simply that the tintype can be thrown away. The sturdy group. And I can be what I choose to be, with only half of the disapproval. No longer the public. You won't get into the press because you're someone's son. Unless you get arrested for something serious or newsworthy. Nor will I. I'll have my man. 
such as he is, and such as I want him for. And only Mother will really mind. We'll see each other less, all of us, and finally not at all, I'd imagine, except on occasions. Whatever we disdain will be our own affair. You can too, probably very soon, when all of this is finished. Do what? Resign. You will be rich enough. Or do you want to go on with it even after he's gone? Isn't it pointless for you there? Aren't you useless? Probably. I don't like it very much. I don't feel part of it. Though it's a way of getting through from ten to six. Avoiding all I know I'd be doing if I didn't have it. Those demons of mine. Those demons. You're no different. Will you keep him on at the firm after all of this is finished and you've no more obligation to my father? Or did you make a bond to keep it up forever? There is no bond. Your brother isn't with me as a charity. You don't think that, do you? You fill your position nicely, and you're nicely paid for doing it. If you choose to leave, of course, nothing will falter. Nor, for that matter, will I feel any particular loss. But we know that about each other, don't we? But no one's waiting to throw you down. That's your sister's manner. Don't ask me to talk about it now. I didn't know that you didn't care for me. I suppose I always assumed... Well, that we were all a form of family Don't and... Don't uh... assume. Well, no matter. Did I say I didn't care for you? I thought I said I'd feel no loss if you were gone. I'm pretty much out of loss. Sorry. That is what you said. Enough. More. The base of the neck. Slowly. No, very slowly. Uh-huh. They were animals. And I had a moment of absolutely thrilling dread. Very much as when I read of the Chinese who are adept at keeping a man alive and conscious. Conscious for hours while they strip the skin from his body. They tie him to a pole. What for? So he won't wander off, I'd imagine. I'm not one of your usual masochists in spite of what she thinks. I mean, a broken rib really hurts. And anybody over 12 knows what a black eye on our lady means. I don't fancy any of that. But I do care an awful lot about the guilt I can produce in those who do the hurting. Mother. She's sleeping. You're not, are you? Hmm? You're not, are you, sleeping? No, I'm far too exhausted. Wake Mother up. Let her sleep, for God's sake. Do you want to start in again? Do you have some new pleasure for us? I want to tell her that I'm sorry. Well, I dare say she knows that. Has for years. Still, Nobody's a fool here. You were never a mother. No, nor have you been. But you've been a woman. And the old instinct is always there, right? Right. But you have been a wife. Twice, as I remember. Not to count your adventures in mistresshood. How many men have you been through? No divorces you, just bury them. Listen to me, young lady. There are things you have no idea of. Matters might cross your mind where you're not so self-possessed. You lash out. Which can be a virtue. I dare say, strident and suicide. If it's used to protect and not just as a revenge. Okay. But you're careless, not only with facts, but of yourself. 
What words will you ever have left if you use them all to kill? What words will you summon up when the day comes and at Mehipur you, when you suddenly realize you've been in love? Oh, for a week, say, and not known it, not being familiar with the symptoms, being such an amateur. Love with mercy, I mean. Not the kind you can hold back as a reward or use as any sort of weapon. What vocabulary will you have for that? Perhaps you'll be mute? Many are. The self-conscious. In a foreign land with only the phrases the guidebook gives them. Or maybe it'll be dreamlike for you. Nightmarish. Lockjawed, throat constricted, knowing whatever word you use, whatever phrase you may say, will come out not as you mean it then, but as you meant before. And that I love you, I need you, no matter how joyously meant, will be the snarl of a wounded and wounding animal. You better go back to grade school. <laughs> I'm far too old for that, aren't I? Perhaps you are. It would serve you right. There's ignorance enough in you, too, you know. You've not been that much in touch, except with him. And he's hardly one to keep up to date. So true. But, and I do hate to say this, I really do, unless you're some kind of unique, I've seen your type before. Screw yourself. You've stopped. Yes, my fingers ache. You never were much good at anything. How am I supposed to do that, I wonder? It's usually said to men, but even there it's a figure of speech. Don't involve me, please. That's very interesting. It is. What is? His heart stopped beating. For three beats, then it started again. Wake, Mother. No, you know it began again. Well, maybe you were asleep. You're old enough. Surely, but I wasn't. Fall asleep with the stethoscope to his chest. Dream of stop and go, wake immediately, jolted back by the content? No. His heart stopped beating for three beats, then it started again, nothing less than that. I thought I'd report it. It's interesting when it happens, but it's nothing to write home about. Just thought I'd report it, that's all. What does it signify? It must something weakening. What did you mean? Something conscious, like fighting it off? Maybe. No, you're better than that. They tell you more on television. <laughs> now they do. In a way. Just think, it could have been finished then. I don't mean anything but the wonder of it. Why don't you believe in suffering? Does he know he is suffering? No, I don't mean him. I meant you and you. I do. Believe in suffering. Well, what are you? A fundamentalist, one of those God designed it so it must be right type persons down deep beneath the silvery surface. She didn't mean that. Oh, how would you know? You're not much good at anything. Did you mean that? I meant at least two things, as I usually do. No divorces. I just buried them. Well, what would you have me do? Oh, I know. You meant it as a way of speaking. You were trying to be unkind. But keep it in mind, should your lover be rid of his wife, marry you and die, you've been a woman, but you haven't been a wife. It isn't very nice, you know, to get it all at once. My deaths were sudden. Heart attack and car. Still, maybe it's better than this. You get it all at once and then you're empty. You go from that to grief without the intervening pain. You can't suffer with the man because he's dead. He's dying, yes. The only horror in participation is, well, another time. Look here, you accuse me before of being, what is that old-fashioned word, a gold digger, of having insinuated myself? I said you probably. Yes, of course, but you're imprecise, and I know what you meant that I'm expecting something less than I've received from your father, money. In other words, a portion of which you were expecting for having permitted yourselves to be born. May I engage you? No? 
all right. We'll see you in good time. I remember a family once, two children, both well into their 50s with a dying mother, 80-something. These children, and there's no allegory here, read yourselves in if you want, but I hope not. These elderly children didn't like each other very much. The daughter had married, perhaps not wisely, for a second time penniless, younger than she, rather fruity to the eye and to the ear, but perhaps more of a man than most you never know. But the reasons went farther back, the dislike, to some genesis I came upon them too late for. And in the last months of their mother's life, they did battle for percentage of her will for her estate, but 50-50 wouldn't do. And it would shift from that to 60, 40, 70, 30, once I'm told. The mother, you see, had loved them both. Either one that came to her could tilt the balance. But she ended it exactly where she had started it, half to each. And all that had happened was damage. The daughter was the one at fault and more grievously, for she'd been spoiled in a way that sons are seldom. But all of this is just to tell you that I'm not an intruder in the dollar sense. I've got more than enough. I was born with it. Don't you people ever take the trouble to scout? And I told her father that all I wanted was his company and, and love. He agreed with me. You'll be distressed to hear. He said you needed it. So, I'm not your platinum blonde with the chewing gum and the sequin dress. <laughs> I'm supposed to like you now, I take it. Fall into your arms, cry a little, and choke out words like sorry and forgive. You've got the wrong lady. I wouldn't expect it. And I really don't much care. I've got more important things. He taught me a sense of values, you know, more than I thought was adequate. Cold, perhaps, but it's right on the button. It took a little while, but I suppose I knew I would be going through this someday, so I learned. And do you know something else? I will be there at the funeral. Ashes, if I have my way, if he has his. But either way, this is one ritual I will not defer for. You wouldn't dare. You don't know me, child. I won't have it. Be calm. It's not a mind gone mad with power, or a dip into impropriety, or even the need to reopen the wound, for the wound is closed, you know. Your mother knows. You do, too. You're railing because you never saw it open. You can't even find a scar. You don't even know where it was. It must be infuriating. None of that. It's simply, I will not be put down by sham. And I will be there dressed in my grey and white, a friend of the family. There'll be none of your Italian melodrama, with all the buzz as to who is the stranger off to one side, the woman in black that nobody knows, wailing louder than the widow and the family put together, none of that. I've always known my place, I shall know it then. Don't wake her, let her sleep. You're right. I am an amateur. May I join you? Sensible shoes help, but when you're way up in the teens like me, there's nothing for it but this sometimes. <laughs> Any change? No, none. Well, some, of course. Procession, but nothing really. You're much too fat. Heavy, rather. I'm sedentary. Mm. Eat less. Do isometrics. You won't last out your 50s. Maybe not. No, I'm not skin and bones myself. But women are different. Our hearts are better. Eat fish, raw vegetables, and fruit. Avoid everything you like, oh, except sex. Have a lot of that. Fish, raw vegetables, fruit, and sex. Thank you. Eggs, red flesh, milk, cheese, butter, nuts, most starches, oh, except potatoes and rice. Ignore them all. They're all bad for you. 
Have two whiskeys before dinner, a glass of good burgundy with it, and sex before you go to sleep. That'll do the trick, keep you going. Four? Till it's time for you to die. No point in rushing it. Death, 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 death. Death, yes. Well, it gets us where we live, doesn't it? Ah. Oh. oh. I was asleep. I was asleep. I was dreaming. And I dreamt I was asleep, and it wakened me. Have I, have it's I? It's all right, go back to sleep. Oh, no, I mustn't. I can't. Is everything all right? Is everything is all right, really. Shouldn't you be back there? If I should be, I would be. Yes. I'm sorry. I was dreaming of so many things. Odd. And well, that I was shopping for a, a kind of thread, a brand that isn't manufactured anymore, and I knew it, but I thought that they might have some in the back. I couldn't remember the name of the maker, and of course that didn't help. They showed me several that were very much like it. One in particular that I almost settled on, but didn't. They tried to be helpful. It was what they used to call a dry goods store. And it was called that. And I remember a specific, not smell, but scent the place had when I only remember from being little, so I was clearly in the past. And when they couldn't help, I asked if I could go in the back, the stock. They smiled and said, of course. And so I went through a muslin curtain into the stock. And it was not at all what I'd expected. Shelves of cardboard boxes, bales of twine, bolts of fabric, There's some of the boxes with labels on them, some with buttons pasted to the end, telling what was there. None of it. It was all canned fruits and vegetables, peas and carrots and string beans and wax beans and bottles of chili sauce and ketchup and canned meats and everything else I'd not expected and was not a help to me. And so I walked back through the muslin and into the living room my family had had when I was 12 or so, a year before we moved. It was the room my aunt had slapped me in, and I sensed I was asleep, and it woke me. Excuse me. Dreams, yes. Are you all right? Well, I suppose trying to shut it all out helps. I felt a rush of outrage back a while, not over what she brought on or my wife's sister or myself for that matter or all this, but very generally as if my brain was going to vomit. And I thought if I could be very still as I was when I was a child and felt I was going to be sick over something, it would go away. Well, no, not go away, but recede. And it has, I think, some. Mother. I upset you then, I'm sorry. What I said wasn't kind. You do understand it as well as the next. Mother. And excluding you was never my intention, for any cruel reason, that is. Oh, I may have wanted to join the two of us together, as close as we were, but had not admitted or discussed, certainly. For we have so much to learn from each other. Mother. 
You better answer her. She'll go downstairs again. No, she's done that once and won't succeed with it again for no reason other than you wouldn't let her out the door, would you? <laughs> Besides, it wouldn't be shocking anymore. Merely tiresome. She'd be pounding her fists on the... Mother! Do answer her. I may never speak to her again. I'm not certain now. I have other things on my mind. But there's a good chance of it. I seldom speak to strangers. And if one should try to be familiar at a time of crisis or sorrow, I'd be enraged. Well, I suppose, were I to stumble on the way to the grave site and one, she were to take my elbow to keep me from falling, I might say, thank you, looking straight ahead. Unlikely, though, isn't it? Stumbling? No, I don't think I shall speak to her again. So much for that. You notice I did say grave sight, and I'm not speaking of an urn of ashes. I know. I heard you. I will do battle with you there, no matter what you tell me. No matter what an envelope may say, I will have my way. Not a question of faith or a repugnance, merely an act of will. Well, I won't argue it with you now. It's all still there. Oh, just as it was. Sorry. I'm being quite preposterous. I'm sorry. It's just that it's all still there. Just as I remember it. Not from when I may have seen it last. When? 20 years. But as it was when I was a child. The enormous sink, the strop, the paneling, the pier glass, six shower heads in the mosaic tile, the white milk glass bottles with silver tops, which hazel and cologne, the gilt lettering rubbed nearly off, and the ivory brushes and the comb. Sorry. I'm sorry. It would take you, wouldn't it? Choose anything. Any of the honors, the idea of a face in your mind, something from when he took you somewhere once, or came halfway around the world when you were burning up, and the doctors had no way of knowing what it was then in those times. Sat by your bed the four days till it began to slacken, then slept. No, not any of it. Give us you, and you find a bathroom moving. Well, I can't expect you to be the son of your father and be much. It's too great a burden. But to be so little is... You've neither of you had children. Thank God, children that I've known of. I hope you never marry either of you. Let the line end where it is, at its zenith. Mother, be kind. We made them both. Remember how I told you that he asked me that, if it were true? And how I laughed and said, oh, yes, remember? I'm going across the hall to the solarium. All right. So you'll know where I am. All right. In case. All right. Aren't you up to it? Not up to you, Mother. Never was. Well. Well. Indeed. 
Dear God, why can't you let him alone? Why couldn't you let him be just this once? Everyone is the target of something. Something unexpected. And maybe even stupid. <laughs> you can shore yourself up beautifully. Guns on every degree of the compass. Perfect surround. But when the sky falls in, or the earth gives way beneath your feet, so what? It's all untended. And what's it guarding? Why couldn't you have left him alone? Just this once. He spent his grown life getting set against everything, fobbing it all off, covering his mess as best he can. And so what if the sight of one unexpected, ludicrous thing collapses it all? So what? It's proof. Isn't it proof that he's not as little as you said he was? It is. You know. You make me as sick as I make you. You, uh, you'd better go back, I think. He may have fallen asleep. Doubt it. It's a trick he has, makes patients think he isn't watching. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be rude. I'm sorry. If I am dozing, which is possible, though I don't think I've slept in over 40 years, if I am, I imagine my intuition would snap me back if anything needed doing, wouldn't you think? My famous intuition. Sorry. That's all I seem to say. Shall I apologize to you for anything? No, thank you. But I may just automatically so pay no attention. You could answer my question, though. Have I forgotten it? Probably. I was wondering, musing, if I had been you, the little girl that you were when he came to you, would you have come along as I did? Would you have come to take my place? Oh, no. I don't think so. We function so differently. I function as a wife. And you, don't misunderstand me, you do not. Married twice, yes, you were. But I doubt your husbands took a mistress, for you were that, too. And no man who has a mistress for his wife will take a wife as a mistress. We're different kinds. Whether I had children or not, I would always be a wife and mother, a symbol of stability rather than refuge. Both your husbands were married before they met you, no? Mm-hmm, yes. Perhaps you're evil. Oh, no, I don't think so. I never scheme. I've never sought a man out, said, I think I will have this one. Oh, is he married? I see. Well, no matter. That will fall like a discarded skin. No, I'm not like that at all. I've cared for only three men, my own two husbands and yours. My, how shocking that sounds. Well, three men and one boy. That was back, very far, 15 and 16. God, we were in love, innocent, virgins, both of us. And I doubt if either of us had ever told a lie. We met by chance at a lawn party one Sunday afternoon and had got ourselves in bed by dusk. You might not call that love, but it was. We were not embarrassed children. Awkward and puppy rutting, no. Fifteen and sixteen. And never been before. But our sex was a strong and practiced and assisting, known thing between us from the very start. Fumbling, tears and guilt, no. Not a bit of it. He was the most beautiful person I've ever seen. 
with a face I wouldn't even try to describe. He had a lithe, smooth swimmer's body and a penis I could not dismiss from my mind when I was not with him, for I'm not one of your women who thinks these things are of no account. We were a man and a woman. We were an uncorrupted man and woman. We made love all that summer, every day, wherever, whenever. Then it stopped. We stopped. What happened? Something tragic? Did he die or become a priest? No, nothing like it. We had to go back to school. Christ. I had to go back to school. Could anything be simpler? No burning correspondence? No love and fidelity sworn through eternity? Well, surely a weeping farewell. Holding hands, staring at the ceiling, swearing passion till Christmas holiday. No, not that at all. We made love our last day together, kissed rather as a brother and a sister might. Said goodbye, I love you, and goodbye, I love you. Couple of horny kids, that's all. No, I don't think you're right there. Oh, well, we were that, certainly. But I also think we were very wise. Leave it. Don't touch it again. I tell you, it was simple. We had to go to school. We were children. And you never saw him again. True. He was from across the country. He'd been visiting that summer. What became of him? Oh, things. Things I've read about from time to time. Nothing. Oh, come on. What became of him? Whatever you like. He died and became a priest. What do you care? I don't. And shut it up. Four men, then. Hmm? Oh, well, yes. Yes, I suppose he was a man. Four men, then. Not too bad, I guess. Spread out, not all bunched together. <laughs> yes. I have loved only once. Yes. What if there is no paper? What if all the envelopes are business and don't say a thing about it? What if there are no instructions? Then it is in the hands of the wife, is it not? Oh, yes, certainly. Still. Still? After a time, it, uh, after a time, the prerogative becomes only legal. Only and legal? Those two words next to each other from you? I can't stop you. Why would you want to? And why are we playing what if? He's a thorough man, knows as much law as you, or certainly some things. I am not a speculator. Those envelopes are not from yesterday. I dare say not. How old were you when you became aware of death? Well, what it meant, you mean? Uh, well, the age we all become philosophers, uh, 15. No, no. When you were aware of it for yourself. When you knew that you were at the top of the roller coaster ride, when you knew that half of it was probably over and you were on your way to it. Oh, uh, 38. Did you make a will then? Yes. Instructions in it? Yes, but not about that. Not about what was to be done with me. Perhaps that's something that women think about more. Maybe. And maybe it's something I never thought to think about. Do I sound absolutely tribal? Am I wearing feathers and mud? And are my earlobes halfway to my shoulders? I wonder. My rationale has been perfectly simple. You may lose your husband while he is alive, but when he is not, then he is yours again. He still is. What? Alive. We know that. Wondered, that's all. Let's not talk about it anymore. We're misunderstood. It's just that well, never mind. That you're his best friend in the world and you care about what happens to it. Something like that. Well, there are a number of his best friends here and we all seem quite concerned. That we differ is incidental. Hardly. I warn you, if there are no papers, and I doubt there are, and you persist in having your way, I will take it to court. That will take a long time. No doubt. Well, it was pleasant having you as my lawyer. 
Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. We're talking about my husband. Well, surely you've not forgotten. You were a guest in our house in the days when we had a house together. We entertained you here. You and your wife spent Christmas with us many times. Who remembered to bring you your cigars from Havana whenever we were there? And who went shopping with you to surprise your wife to help you make sure it was right and not the folly you husbands make of so many things? Wife, remember? I think I shall cry. No, no. Do what you want with him. Cast him in bronze if you like. I won't do battle with you. I like you both too much. I told you what he wants, that's all. Or what he wanted when he told me. Let's not fall out over the future. If I retract, will you hire me back again? You were never fired. What would I do without you? Rhetoric. Join hands. Kiss. Sing. What is it if you kill your daughter? It's matricide if she kills you, and infanticide if you do her when she's a tot. But what if she's all grown up and beginning to wrinkle? Justifiable homicide, I suppose. Doctor. No, stay back. It's nothing for you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. It's all right. It's a hemorrhage, but it's all right. Are you certain? It's all right. Tell me something. Talk to me. About anything. Yes. Anything. The, uh, the garden. Yes, the garden we had when we had our house in the country outside of Paris. We were in France for nearly three years. Did, you, did he tell you that? Yes. Was it lovely? He couldn't. He couldn't have taken you there. It was lovely. It burned down. They wrote to us. What a pity. It was lovely. It wasn't just a garden. It was a world of floration. <laughs> Is that a word? Well, no matter. It was a world of what it was. One didn't walk out into a garden in the sense of when they say to you, come see what we've done, not any of that. Of course, it had been planned by careful minds, a, a woman and a man, I think, or it was that kind, or oh, several generations. And it resembled nothing so much as an environment. Is anyone telling me the truth? Yes. Thank you. The garden. Yes. The, um, the house. The house itself was centuries old, rather Norman on the outside, wood laid into plaster, but not boxy in the Norman manner. Small but rambling. Stone floors, huge simple mantles, great timbers in the ceilings, and a kitchen the size of a drawing room, you know. And all about it, clinging to it, spreading in every way, a tamed wilderness of garden. No, not tamed, planned, a planned wilderness. Such profusion and all the birds and butterflies from miles around were privy to it. And the bees. One could walk out and make bouquets red dawn would have envied. I don't think I want to talk about it anymore. Well, close, but all right. There's no predicting those. May I join you? Oh. That's better. I suddenly feel quite old. 
Which could pass for a laugh, couldn't it? Are you going to retire one day? Oh, couldn't now. Way past retirement age. Should have done it 15 years ago. Besides, what would I do? Did it hasten it? Sure. What else do you expect? Every breath diminishes. Each heartbeat is taking a chance. I've never understood how you doctors stay so well in the midst of it all. The contagions. You must rattle from pills. Be a mass of pricks. Oh, it's easier now. Used to be a day, though. Still, it's interesting. In Europe, in the time of the Black Plague, and I read about it, don't be thinking fresh, when 80% of a town would go wiped out in a week, the doctors, such as they were, would lose only half. Wasn't much the doctors could do in those days against the bubonic, especially the pneumonic, but saddling up and running wouldn't have helped. Postponed, maybe. So they stayed, tried to get the bubos to break, nailed some houses shut with all the living inside, if there was a case, preceded the priests by a day or two in their rounds. Priests had the same break as the doctors, same percentages, might mean something. Probably not. You want some more history? No, not really. I'll go back then. If you do, let me know. I'm up on it. You got a headache or something? Christ. Be in the solarium too. What will you do? I don't know. I've thought about it, of course. But nothing seems much good. I'm not a drinker and I'm far too old for drugs. I thought of taking a very long trip of going places I've not been, we've not been. But that's got quite a lot against it too. Do I want to forget or do I want to remember? If the choice comes to masochism or cardis, then maybe best do nothing. Well, of course, I must do something. The sad thing is I've seen so many of them, the ones who are suddenly left without their men, going back to the places they've known together, sitting on terraces and looking about. They give the impression of wanting to be recognized. As if the crowd in Cannes that year had all the people from the time before and someone would come and say hello. They overdress, which is something they never would have done before. Three in the afternoon they're in evening frocks and jewelry and their makeup is for the dim of the cocktail lounge, not the sun. Oh, I'm not speaking of the women that fall apart. No, I mean the straight ladies who are mildly startled by everything. As if something they could not quite place were not quite right. Well, it's all the things that they've come there not to admit, that the past is not the present, and they must order for themselves, trust no one. And the groups are even worse. Those three or four that make the trips together, those coveys of bewildered widows, talking about their husbands as if they'd gone to the club or, or at a stag. There's a coarsening in that. A lack of respect for oneself, ultimately. I shall go away. I know that. And it won't be to places unfamiliar, either. For there are different kinds of pain. And being once more where one has been and shared must be easier than being where one could never. I know what I'll do. I shall go to all the places that I've been, that we've been, but I shall do it all out of focus for you. Indeed it will be. I shall go to Deauville in October with only the Normandie open. Take long wrapped up walks on the beach in the cold and the gray. 
I spend a week in Copenhagen when the Tivoli is closed and have my Christmas in Venice where I'm told it usually snows. Or maybe I'll just go back to Berlin and stare at the wall. We were there when they put it up. There's so much one can do and so little. What will you do? Well, it's very different. I've been practicing widowhood for so many years, I don't know what effect the fact will have upon me. Maybe none. I've settled into a life which is comfortable, interesting, and useful. And I contemplate no change. You never know, though. It may be I've told myself all lies. And I am no more prepared for what will happen when, tonight, tomorrow morning, than I would be were he to shake off the coma, rise up from his bed, put his arms about me, ask my forgiveness for all the years, and take me back. I can't predict. I know I want to feel something. I'm waiting to. And I have no idea what I'm stirring up. You make a lot of adjustments over the years, if only to avoid being eaten away. Anger, resentment, loss, self-pity, and self-loathing, loneliness. <laughs> you can't live with all that in the consciousness very long. So you put it under, or it gets well. And you're never sure which. Worst might be if there's nothing there anymore, if everything has been accepted. I'm not a stoic by nature, by any means. I would have killed for my children back when I cared for them. And he could please me and hurt me in ways so subtle and complex I was always more amazed at how did it happen than I was by what. I remember once we were in London for a conference, and naturally he was very busy. And... No, I don't want to talk about that either. <laughs> Something must be stirring. It's the second time I bought. You won't mind. Well, I won't know till it's too late, will I? You are going to ask me to marry you, aren't you? <clears throat> Certainly. And I shall refuse, shall I not? Certainly. I'm no bargain. <laughs> Besides, 50 years married to one man, I wouldn't be settling on three or four with another, or even 10 if you outwit all the actuaries. <laughs> and besides, go listen to how it sounds from someone my age, my condition. I'm devoted to you, sir, but I'm not in love with you. Fill my mouth with mold for having said it, but I love my husband. Of course you do. Of course you do. Yes. Well, perhaps if I had been... <laughs> no. I don't suppose so. Where are the others? In the solarium. You'd best have them come in. No. I'll get them. Not yet. They should be here. I don't mean them. I'll get them. Not yet. Shh, be a rock. Why? They need you too. Not you? I'll manage it with help, though. You be. You be the rock. I've been one all the years. Steady. It's profitless. Learn just a little longer. You be. You of your sir. I'm sorry. That's not fair. Why? Because I no longer had what you up and took something like it. I don't love you. I don't love anyone anymore. I don't love you. And I don't love you. 
Don't do that. And you know I don't love you. I love my husband. Stop it! You stop it! All we've done is think about ourselves. There's no help for the dying, I suppose. Oh, Mark, the burden. What will become of me and me and me? <laughs> We're the ones who have got to go on. Selfless love. <laughs> I don't think so. We love to be loved. And when it's taken away, why not rage or pew? All we've done is think about ourselves, ultimately. <laughs> why are you crying because I'm unhappy <laughs> because I'm unhappy <laughs> because I'm unhappy <laughs> because I'm unhappy. All over. <laughs> <laughs> 